Curious about vegetables? Talk to Iswesin. Hello everyone, welcome to Around the Veg Table. There's a lot of discussion these days around vegetable production, from sowing, from quality of seeds, from varieties to plant, also vegetable production techniques and more. Iswes Seed has been in the vegetable seed sector for nearly 40 years, providing quality products of vegetable seeds and delivering advisory services to farmers in the tropics. We are here to share our thoughts and simplify the complexities in vegetable production. My name is Lisette Lacambra. I'm the technical specialist of Iswa Seed Knowledge Transfer, working with farmers over 14 years, focused on training approaches that will enable them to be more productive and successful. I'm currently involved in building a technical capacity of our technical staff and also developing extension materials for farmers. I will be your host for this program. Today is our first episode in Around the Veg Table. I would like to introduce our expert, Marvin. Hello, Marvin. Thank you, Lisette. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Marvin Martin. I'm working as a product development support for SVC for more than 10 years now. My work is to test the market acceptance and adaptability of our hybrid mm -hmm. based on local condition. And uh, based on the result, select which variety we can recommend mm -hmm. to the farmers. Um, currently, I'm active in selecting varieties for Africa and South Asia. If I said South Asia, that include uh, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. I think your role in the company, uh, Marvin, is very crucial, especially in providing varieties that really will work for all farmers. Right. That's why it takes at, us at least uh, one and a half year to two years mm -mm. to complete the testing. Um, this is to ensure that the variety that we are going to introduce to the farmers will really benefit them. You said you are looking at the markets uh, for Africa and South Asia. Do you have any favorite country? Mm, Tanzania for sure. <laughs> oh, Mambo. Habari ako? Oh, where did you pick up <laughs> that language? Of course. <laughs> From colleagues. <laughs> yeah. I have worked in Tanzania for more than five years as product development. Mm -mm. So, of course, there, there are a lot of things which I miss there. Mm -mm. Like the Ugali, the Nyama Choma. Mm. And of course, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, I were uh, colleagues and friends there. I know those are very delicious food. Uh, surely you miss our local colleagues there, of course. And then, especially interacting with farmers in Tanzania. Yes. Yes, I uh, meet a lot of farmers there and then uh, seeing them uh, happy to see you and welcome you back. Their excitement to share their experience mm -hmm. and uh, success true. stories yeah. that motivate us to do more. That's true and I hope that you will get the opportunity to visit again after this pandemic. So I know that when you were there in Tanzania, you receive a lot of uh, questions from farmers, I think uh, especially on their production. So what do you usually get from these farmers or what is what are the challenges that uh, farmers face in the field when you visit the field normally the farmer will ask you a lot of questions mm -mm. either it's cultural management uh, uh, pest and diseases mm -mm. Fertil fertilizer mm -mm. chemical what are hybrids to use or what is the benefit of using a hybrid those kind of questions you know and uh, there's a lot of things that they normally ask perfect we also have collected uh, most frequently asked questions from farmers and thank you for joining us today to untangle all these complexities in vegetable production. Let's start with a general question, Marvin. When we start on vegetable production, planning is very important. You just don't dive there and then expect that you will get the magic out of what you plant, especially if this is for commercial uh, production purposes, right? I uh, agree with you, Lisette. Farming is also a business, mm -hmm. so uh, you need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. You should know how much is your budget, and of course you need to have a passion before you go into it. And when we say farm planning, one of the things that needs careful decision and careful uh, consideration is what crops or variety and varieties to plant, right? What do farmers need to consider uh, when selecting crops and varieties? Before you start your farming, first of all is you have to ask yourself, where is your market? Where are you going to sell your produce? Mm -hmm. What are the consumer's preferences, for example? Because some people mm -hmm. have different pre preferences in terms of color, maybe land, taste, 
uh, shape, those kind of things. Then uh, the next thing that you have to consider is your growing area. Is it in midland? Mm -hmm. Is it in lowland? Is it in highland? For example, before, cabbage is only grown in the highland. It's true. Right? But now we also have some varieties that can adapt in lowland. Mm -mm. They have good heat, heat tolerance. Mm -mm. So if you plant the variety in the wrong place, then you will end up disappointed. Either the variety is not going to form head, mm -mm. it might flower, the head will be small in size. Say I have this variety of uh, pumpkin, Marvin, that I really like. Can farmer use this same variety for whole year round? That depends on the crop. There are varieties that has a wider adaptability. Mm -mm. Also, there are some varieties developed with better heat tolerance mm -mm. and virus resistance, which is adaptable for a summer season planting. During rainy season, of course, is you observe different kind of diseases, more into uh, fungal and bacterial diseases, right? So what I can advise, the best way is to, to consult or contact the company field market representative mm -hmm. and uh, they can give more advice on which variety is suitable on your planting season. For those uh, new mm -hmm. or just starting their uh, farming business, what I can advise is they should start first in a small area and uh, slowly expand while they gain experience and knowledge mm -hmm. uh, on, this, uh, on this business. Other thing is that they can also uh, visit the experienced farmers, their neighbors. Uh, I'm sure they, they can learn a lot from them and probably those experienced farmers can also advise them which variety they can uh, plant mm. in the area. Uh, in connection to that, uh, Marvin, to what you have said that farmers, especially farmers to observe other farmers in the community on what they uh, plant, on what variety mm. they use. You know, this comes, you know, the saying that to see is to believe. When neighboring farmers see this crop and varieties working with these other farmers, yeah. you know, they copy, they also do it in their own field. Um, some may get a good result, same as what the other farmers or the experienced farmers get, but yeah. some also may get a poor result out, out of that copying the other farmers. Why do you think this happens and how how to avoid this? But uh, they have to consider also the season set. Mm -mm. Maybe the other farmers planted in the right season and then uh, the other farmer saw it that it really did well. Mm -mm. But when he's going to plant it, he's going to plant it in the wrong season. Mm -hmm. So the tendency is he's going to fail. Another factor is about the management. Good variety alone is not enough. Mm -mm. It needs also good agricultural practices so that you can bring out the full potential that you can get out of the variety. Yeah. That's why we have knowledge transfer, right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, teach the farmers about uh, techniques and uh, knowledge mm -hmm. so that they can increase their uh, yield and income per unit area. Yeah, that's true. I fully agree on that, Marvin. Like the good quality of seed plus no, the good yeah. production practices should go hand in hand. And at um, Knowledge Transfer also we aim to train farmers, extension workers, and even agro-dealers on this uh, good management or uh, crop management. And speaking of agro-dealers, no, there are also questions of farmers. They, they are asking how they can get assurance that the seeds that they buy or the varieties that they buy to agro dealers are the varieties that are really suitable suitable in their area. Before introducing a product in the market, we normally conduct int intensive testing the set. But for open field cultivation, mm -hmm. it's difficult to control environmental factors, right? Uh, like insect, insect pests, yeah, diseases. diseases. Mm -hmm soil fertility, mm -hmm. and most of all is the climatic condition, right? Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to say that the variety can perform in all situations. Maybe what I can say is if the farmer is doubtful about the performance of the product, mm -hmm. he can do some uh, small testing himself and see if the variety can really perform or give benefits to him. I think some people, some farmers are very resourceful, very creative. They can ask, they can seek uh, support from other farmers, and also they can do the testing by themselves. So that's a very good point. Back to what is available to agro dealers. So we have hybrid seeds, different types of seeds, you know. But then we 
often also receive questions from farmers, especially on hybrid seeds. And uh, one top question is why the price of hybrid seeds is very expensive. Yes, there's a price difference for sure. But we have also to show to the farmers that with hybrid, they can get more benefit from their investment. For example, is the higher yield, better disease resistance. For example, is our successful tomatoes in Africa. The farmers really like it because of uh, the bacterial wilt resistance and also the virus resistance. Mm -hmm. Developing this hybrid takes time from uh, breeding, seed production, transportation and uh, quality maintenance which involve cost but these costs are necessary to ensure that the farmers can get the high quality seeds and have an access to this uh, good materials mm -mm. there are farmers who also extract seeds the one that they, yes. are, they planted right uh, the seeds that they will also plant for the next season or for the next cropping. What's your take about this? We can still observe a lot of uh, self-saved seeds mm -hmm. in many places. And farmers to farmers trading is also common. Mm -hmm. What they need to improve mm -hmm. is to learn to collect to the right fruits or plants. This is to avoid the disease that might come with it. Considering that the other inputs are getting expensive like labor, fertilizer, chemical. Personally, I would rather invest extra more in buying the certified seeds or improved seeds to ensure that I can maximize the benefits or yield that I can get in my field. Mm -mm. When you say extraction, is this also applicable to hybrid seeds? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, de definitely not. <gasps> definitely not. Unlike the local varieties, the performance will not be the same mm -hmm. as the first time you planted the hybrid. This is because you will observe segregation. In the, in the field, you will observe different shape. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the resistance is lower. The fruit quality is not there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the worst thing is that you cannot even get uh, marketable fruits. Mm. I have an experience in Tanzania wherein I visited a, f a farmer's field where he extract uh, hybrid tomato seeds. When you see the field, it's really disaster. He mm. didn't even uh, harvest any fruits because mm. the, uh, the field is full of uh, viruses. When you see the plant, there's uh, huge segregation. Yeah. So what's the lesson of, <laughs> of this farmer? <laughs> I think. What did he say to you? <laughs> I think he learned. His, I think he learned his lesson. Mm. So uh, he never extract uh, hybrids again. Mm -mm. But the farmers knows about it. Yeah. Because, but. Sometimes they just want to try. Yeah. If it works, they normally they do. But yeah. if it doesn't work, then they normally forget about it. <laughs> to see is to believe. Yeah, to see is to believe. Yes. Yeah. Another question, no, so that we level the knowledge. Like we are talking about hybrid seeds, we're talking about yes. open pollinated seeds. Can you explain more about these two different types of uh, seeds? Yeah. If uh, if we talk about open pollinated. Good example in here is the beans, right? OP is a product of continuous cycle of planting the same variety and uh, saving the seeds for the next cropping season. Well, if you talk about uh, hybrids, hybrid is a product of uh, modern technology, which is done by combining two parental lines to get a better variety. The purpose of hybridization is to speed up developing variety that has the combination of desired traits needed by the market. Either higher yield, better disease resistance, good food quality, transportability, shelf life, mm -hmm. and many more. You mentioned resistance, Marvin. To what extent does a hybrid variety resistant to something? If we talk about hybrid, it doesn't mean that it's resistant to all diseases. There are materials developed to resist humidity-related diseases, which is very common during rainy season, right? Mm, that's true. And other varieties are also developed to have a better adaptability or uh, head tolerance or vir virus resistance which is very common during summer season. So a certain variety is bred for a specific purpose or specific need. Yep. Like for example, this is resistance. Can you say there is there is a forever in resistance? <laughs> like forever in love? <laughs> uh, over time, this pathogen evolves and develop new strain which overcome the resistance of the variety and uh, also due to continuous farming and uh, 
changing uh, weather condition, new diseases arises as well that uh, that can infect the variety. So to answer your question, sorry to say, there's no forever. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> no forever in resistance. Okay, yes. so uh, Marvin, what's the implication of this to the company if the resistance doesn't work anymore with a certain uh, specific variety? As a seed company, we need to be flexible and uh, continuous uh, looking for innovation to develop uh, better varieties. However, farmers are advised to adapt new farming techniques as well to combine in dealing with these problems. These are great insights, Marvin. Thank you for joining our first ever episode of Around the Veg Table. Thank you for answering the burning questions of our farmers, especially on the choosing crops and varieties to plant, and also untangling the complexities of vegetable production. So thank you very much, Marvin. Thank you as well, Lisette. And thank you very much to our viewers and to all our listeners. I hope Hope that this helps you especially in your crop planning on choosing crops and vegetables to plant our takeaway for this episode is that choosing crops and varieties to plant entails careful planning also understanding your needs of your area and also the market demand learn from you the experiences of other farmers in your community however consider factors like season to plant and also the improved production techniques that will help you reach the potential yield. That's the end of our first episode. Do you have any questions you would like us to answer in the future episodes? Leave us your comments here or send us email at ews.info at iswasi.com. If you like our program, please share with your friends. Follow or subscribe to our channel to stay connected with us. Stay tuned for the next episode of Around the Vegetable. Curious about vegetables? Talk to Iswa Seed. Bye! Bye-bye!